Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be going over some of my favorite matchups in week number one of this fantasy football season. If you guys are new to this channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And also at the end of the video, as always, if you did enjoy it, make sure to drop a thumbs up. We're gonna start it off here with number one, Jahan Dotson going up against the Arizona Cardinals. First off, Terry McLaurin has that turf toe injury, all right? This might sideline him in week number one. We are not sure just yet. We should get a report on Wednesday clarifying if he's actually going to practice that will give us a better indication if he's going to play in week one but if he doesn't this is going to leave more work for Jahan Dotson to take advantage of of course now they are playing the worst team in football right now and the commanders are seven point favorites in this matchup now this is supposed to be a low scoring affair I think the over under is 38 right now so I'm not expecting too too much scoring but Jahan Dotson like I said should get that number one wide receiver work for uh the Washington commanders now, I don't know if you guys bet regularly, but a seven-point favorite is a big spread, especially when the commanders are not expected to, you know, score a lot of points, and they're not known as a team that is going to blow you out of the water. That's just how bad that Vegas thinks Arizona is this season, so that should definitely tell you something. Now, the commanders are also at home, so they have that working for them, and I definitely think Sam Howell and this offense have something to prove, all right? They have a chip on their shoulder this season. All right, the fans are more excited than ever for this team. I'm buying into the hype a little bit here. All right, also, if McLaurin does end up playing, what are the chances that he gets his full workload? All right, even if McLaurin does suit up in this matchup, I still like Dotson here. I still think he outperforms his expected uh, fantasy points that ESPN and, you know, whatever website that you're using, basically, I think they're all going to be undervaluing Dotson. Now, going into future weeks, if McLaurin misses any time in the future, I think Dotson is a plug and play every single week. He should be in your lineup as the wide receiver too, or if not, if you have some depth at wide receiver, put him as your flex. Number two up on this list, we have Aaron Jones going up against the Chicago Bears. Now, last season, the Bears gave up the second most rushing yards to opposing teams, along with being fourth in most total yards given up per game to opposing teams. Now, this is Jordan Love's first game starting of the season. Obviously, this is his first year as the full-time starting quarterback of this team, which can mean a lot of dump-off passes, you know, to Aaron Jones. And we've seen in the past that Aaron Jones can make things happen after the catch, turn these into some massive plays. Now, week number two of last season, Jones put together a 32-point PPR performance against Chicago, and most of his damage was done on the ground, actually. Jones can catch a lot of passes like we were just talking about, but he only managed three catches in this game. So imagine if he gets more in week number one here. Now, people obviously start talking at the beginning of every single season so far that Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon have been on the same team. Oh, is this the year that A.J. Dillon finally takes the workload off of Aaron Jones and becomes the starter? I don't think so, right? I don't think that happens unless, one, Aaron Jones goes down with an injury, or two, he retires or leaves the team, all right? That's not even a conversation in my mind. So Aaron Jones, I think, is a very solid play in week number one, especially. All right, number three on our list today, we have J.K. Dobbins going up against the Houston Texans. Now, I think this is a great matchup for Dobbins. The Texans gave up the most rushing yards per game to opposing teams last season. All right, I could easily see the Ravens dominating this game straight out of the gate, which would mean more opportunities for Dobbins in the run game, of course. Now, the Ravens actually ran the ball at the third highest rate last season, but that could easily be attributed to Lamar using his legs quite a bit. So hopefully, uh, J.K. can get very involved in this matchup. And J.K. Dobbins, as a player, overall has been extremely effective throughout his career, averaging 5.9 yards per carry. Now he's fully healthy again. I expect him to jump right back into that sort of production here. Now, another thing is he is definitely the best running back option in Baltimore, but it's all about staying healthy throughout this year. But he is healthy in week one. That's all we really care about in this video. I think he's going to be a sleeper pick in a lot of fantasy drafts. He was going very far down the board, and I, I think he was going in the 70s. That's a, that's a little too low for Dobbins, in my opinion. I think uh, if you drafted him, you got a little steal here. Number four, here we have Chris Olave and Michael Thomas going up against the Tennessee Titans, who were the worst passing defense in football last season. I don't really expect too much to change this year either. Now, I'm looking for Olave to have a big jump in this season with Derek Carr as his quarterback, which I would consider personally an upgrade from Andy Dalton last season. Carr also throws it deep way more than Andy Dalton did. All right, Carr ranks second in air yards per attempt in 2022. Now, another thing I like about this situation is that Derek Carr gives his players chances to win versus man coverage. All right, he ranked fifth in man coverage throw rate last season, which is a great sign here. Anytime they play man, he'll probably throw it up to Olave or Michael Thomas. 
Now, a lot of people think that Michael Thomas is going to take away from Alave's production value. I personally don't think that's the case. Uh, I think of this situation as a slightly discounted A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith combo where both guys are going to get their targets and can both be used in fantasy if they're both healthy, of course. And as far as Michael Thomas goes, I think he's going to have a chip on his shoulder. All right. And I think he's going to perform well. He just got that new contract, a bunch of new incentives. Now, call me a sucker, but I want to see Michael Thomas succeed here in week one. I think he has a great chance to do so. Number five on this list, we have another two for one combo here. We have uh, Chris Godwin and Mike Evans going up against the Minnesota Vikings. Now, we just talked about the Saints playing the worst passing defense last year in football. while the Vikings had the second worst passing defense in football last season. Now, Godwin is a PPR machine, and Evans is the deep ball guy here in Tampa Bay, but obviously he's getting a bit older now. Godwin is the safer option, but Evans provides higher upside if he has a breakout week. Now, for this matchup specifically, I can either see the Bucs falling down early or keeping this game close. I really don't see it being a blowout in the Bucs' favor by any means. Either way, I think it benefits Godwin and Evans. If they fall down early, they're going to get a lot of targets, both of them. So that would probably be the best scenario there. Over the past couple of years, Godwin has been the safety blanket for Tampa Bay, as we talked about. He's going to get overall more targets than Mike Evans and also have a higher floor than Evans. But Evans does provide that higher upside value, as we just talked about. Now, another good thing for Mike Evans' sake is that Baker Mayfield ranked sixth in deep ball completion percentage last season, whereas Tom Brady, his old quarterback, ranked 17th last season. So upgrade at that stat line. Number six, here we have Justin Herbert, and I'm just going to say all of the Los Angeles Chargers receivers against the Miami Dolphins. Herbert in his first game back fully healthy since pretty much the beginning of last season, expecting this game to be an absolute shootout, high scoring on both sides of the ball. Now, Miami ranked bottom five in opposing QBR and also ranked sixth in most passing yards given up to opposing teams last season. Starting with Keenan Allen here, I think once again, he's going to be Herbert's go-to option. I think he's the easily the safest option on this team in terms of fantasy value, and especially in PPR leagues. I think he's going to see around double-digit targets most games this season. Mike Williams is healthy and should offer a good deep threat ability as always. The thing that I don't love about Mike Williams is his inconsistency. Like I said in previous videos now, many of times, he either drops 25 points or he's dropping three points. You got to select very wisely which weeks you want to play this guy, especially in redraft leagues. In best ball leagues, don't even don't even think twice about drafting him because he will have those massive weeks. And he's a great player to have in best ball. And last but not least, Quentin Johnston. He's been the talk of the offseason here and how much value he provides after the catch. So I want to see that on full display in week number one here. Last but not least on this list, we have Raheem Mostert going up against the Los Angeles Chargers. Now with Jeff Wilson Jr. on the IR and Devin Achain, we didn't know if he was going to play, but he's trending in the right direction in week number one. So he he will probably be the backup to Mostert in this matchup. Other than those two, there's no real reliable options in Miami right now. You know, it could be worse. For Mostert, honestly, last season, he averaged 10.5 PPR fantasy points per game while putting up solid games in weeks 5, 7, 10, 15, and 17. LA ranked fifth worst in rushing yards given up per game last season. And although we did talk about Mostert performing well at times, he actually did struggle against the Chargers in last year's matchup, only putting together 5.4 PPR fantasy points. This could be largely attributed to the fact that they went down early in that game. They were behind ever since the second quarter trying to play catch up. So there wasn't many rushing attempts in that game. Now, if the Dolphins can control this game a bit better than last time around, I could easily see Mostert having a good game. And if you want a kind of a sleeper pick in this matchup, Devin Achain could provide great value if he ends up playing. Now, if you guys did enjoy this video, as always, drop a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will catch you in tomorrow's video. Peace.